What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to our social let's play here in FM18 and today it's the end of season 1 review. We're going to take a look over the season as a whole, a little bit about the squad and how it's changed over the year, how I see it perhaps changing over the summer, as well as perhaps lay out some general plans for where I see us kind of advancing I guess going forward because... I feel like this year has been a year of transition, of course, just as a refresher, at the start of the year we were predicted to finish 10th, the kind of board, I think they wanted a top half finish, a mid-table finish, the, the expectations weren't all that massive, and to be honest, I didn't really know where we'd fit into the pile this year, I saw it as a year where I was definitely going to play younger players, and well, we'd see how far that took us, and you can see, looking at the league table, it took us all the way to the playoff final, of course. Uh, we finished third, missing out on that automatic promotion spot by one goal. A single goal would have been enough to do it, but I do feel like there's plenty of positives, and in some ways, I feel like if we had got promoted this year, it really would have compromised what I'm trying to achieve here at Social, because I look at this starting eleven, and it's a very good team, but... There are a number of players here who just wouldn't be good enough for league earned football this year. And if I was to, you know, get promoted, I probably would have had to have replaced them. Whereas now as having a second year in the second tier here in France, I'm hoping that's going to give a lot of these players enough first team football to establish themselves as, you know, players capable of fighting for their own position next season in Ligue 1. Well, that's the plan at least, of course, if we do get promoted. That's a, a little way off, but I feel like having come third this year... The expectation has to be high, you know, for this coming year. We have a young squad. Uh, it's only going to get better, I feel like, as players start entering their prime. And, well, when you consider how close we got, I feel like it, it's definitely realistic. Anyway, just a quick look at the league season as a whole, of course. We did get knocked out in the Coupe de la Ligue second round. That was against Nîmes. Uh, in the Fran French Cup, you can see we lost, of course, on penalties to VAFC. So, an OK Cup run in the French Cup. I guess in the Coupe de la Ligue, it was a little disappointing. But, generally speaking, that was good. And you'd have to say, starting the season, we started it fantastically. You know, you know there was a little bit of a rough patch in August, but we came back strong from that. And ultimately, I feel like the inexperience of our side, our youngest team, has somewhat kind of cost us in the end. You kind of look across this form at the end of the year, uh, there's a hell of a lot of games here, I think 15 in total, and we were only able to win five of them. I mean, that is just not good enough fundamentally, and that is really what has cost us this season. I feel like that comes down to two things. I think it comes down to the inexperience of the, our players, the fact that we were punching above our weight. You know, you look at players like Senhaji, who played a lot of games for us this year. His report, he's only well suited to national football, but... He put in good performances, and well, he, as much as I can kind of fault him for his average rating as a whole, I feel like you have to consider the fact he's a 20-year-old trying to make his mark. Um, and I feel like that's applicable to a fair few of the players in our team. I feel like there's players like Axel Axas, who, he, yes, he cooled off towards the end of the season. Yes, he hasn't developed as much this season as I'd like. But fundamentally, he's not a bad player, and I feel like he's the kind of player who is really going to benefit, hopefully, from another year in Ligue 2. Uh, I will be honest, based off the way he ended the season, I am a little bit worried. Of course, I have already identified at the end of last season that the centre attack in mid-area is probably one of our weakest areas and one of the areas we most desperately need to address. You can see we have four players capable of playing there. Beren Gua, who I think I've already decided is probably going to leave at the end of the season. Uh, Axel Actas, of course. Panna, who can't even naturally play there. He's unaccomplished or unconvincing in that position. And Masco Costa, who, to be honest, I signed at the start of the year and it feels like it was a bit of a waste of money because he filled a, a mould, I guess, that a lot of our players already have. So I talked about Beren Gua's sale. In terms of my plan this summer with the squad, you can see here there are a lot of players here who are on fairly chunky wages that I'd quite like to get rid of. There's a few players like Ogier and Gibault who I think are worth keeping hold of. You know, they've got good determination. They'll be useful tutors. But there's other players here like, um, well, Adolf, who we already know is going, but Tuzgar as well, the Tunisian, uh, 31 years old, earning £4,700, rarely featured in my plans. When he did, he didn't really contribute a whole lot. And I feel like our overall wage expenditures are going to be cut this year quite significantly. I'd like to bring in younger players, which naturally, 
hopefully means they're going to have lesser demands. I mean, when you look at our financial balance, we are a team who do rely on player sales to stay afloat. You can see here we are negative £1 million. Uh, in terms of our wage budget, our committed spending is 136000 That's based on the assumption that the players whose contracts are expiring aren't going to be renewed. I do feel like there will be more players who leave. And I could easily see our wage budget dropping by 25, 30,000, to be honest, depending on how brutal I am with kind of cutting the first team. But I feel like there's some good young players in the market that we need to go and try and hunt out and find over the summer that could definitely put us in the right direction and also help with the overall bank balance. If we were to shave, say, £30,000 off our weekly wages, that would be a total save across the calendar year of £1.5 million, which is huge. And that is something that really can't be underestimated and something that, if we do look to lower the wage budget like that, would mean that we can be less of a selling club, that the younger players we have got going through, we don't feel quite as financially constricted into selling. So... I feel like that's perhaps the approach we have to take is to, you know, try and save some wage budget. We have a lot of players who I think are on a bit too much money and I feel like there's better options out there who are younger, probably have a bit more about them and aren't going to be as expectant when it comes to the wages. So anyway, in terms of our kind of performances this year, Pano was the player of the year for me. He uh, won Ligue 2 player of the year back in January. He was a massively important factor in our team. Of course, signed for a measly... £49.5,000. That is absolute peanuts for a player who did end up getting the highest average rating in the league. You can see here, uh, our overall team of the season, Pana won fans player of the season, but our overall team of the season here, we have Prevo in goal, Pendant, Diara, Ruiz and Fuchs across the back. I'm a little bit surprised Diara gets in there. He did play a few games for us in the league, but not a massive amount. Of course, a player we brought in for, well, £150,000. Didn't perform that great, but maybe that's testament to just how so so we were towards the end of the season anyway Tardio you can see here is our deep line playmaker of course a key player for us but a player who I'm not adverse to selling I feel like at 26 years old he occupies that defensive midfielder position we of course have Chevalier who's coming into the side um, who some of you will have seen in the academy episode too but there's also players kind of coming into his place who are going to be competing for that centre mid position you look at someone like Fuchs as a player who can probably give Tardio a good run for his money in this position. But there are other players out there like Ristol as well, uh, who, if I can find him, here he is. You can see he's quite comparable in a lot of ways and he's only 21. And, uh, well, his wage demands are significantly lower than Florian Tardio's. And so, as much as it pains me to perhaps get rid of a player who's quite popular in terms of he is a bit of a social, not a legend at this point, but a well-established player in the first team after four years here, it might be a tricky decision, but one that benefits us long term because Tardio is really at least from the way I look at it I don't feel like he's ever going to be a league uh, play you know he's 26 his physicals are a little lacking for my like and he's a little one-dimensional in his play and actually cashing in on him might be the right thing to do at this point anyway Panner of course playing on ahead I feel like the front three Trincao, Actas and Katongo all had great seasons I feel like Trincao for me he was the player of the year and that might, might sound a little bit odd but I feel like him and Panna really obviously performed fantastically but not just in terms of performances on the pitch, but in terms of the way this guy's developed this year. It's massive. You know, his crossing's gone from 11.4 to 12.4. His uh, acceleration and pace have not slowed down at all, really. You can see they've improved here by one whole point each. If he can keep these um, kind of, you know, developments going, there's no reason why he can't become just a league-earned quality player who either spearheads us towards, hopefully, a European campaign... Or, at worst, we are able to sell on for a little bit of money. And you can see here, we do actually also have the option to trigger a contract extension clause of three years, which would see his contract run for another three seasons. So, a player that we don't really have any pressure to sell right now. Anyway, of course, up top we have Robinet, who I feel like, this is going to sound really odd, because he was our top goal scorer in the league, but I feel like his days are numbered. I feel like his days are numbered because of one of the additions we've already kind of agreed to bring in. And that is Canton Ducasse. Now, Canton here, I will just call him Ducasse, it's easier. Fantastic player. Playing at French under 19 level, of course, joining us from Bastia. And whilst if we just compare the two players, you might look at it and go, well, Robin A is a better player. I feel like that pace that Ducasse has, the fact he's 17, really means that he's going to be a player we look to give regular first team football to. Whilst. Um, you know, Robin A here is a lot better rounded. Ducasse is just, as a prospect, 
He looks incredible. As an advanced forward, you can see here, there are only real gaps in his games are his passing and decisions, which are only minor attributes. But his finishing's great. Acceleration and balance are fantastic. Off the ball could be a little bit better. But, well, when you look at his report here, fairly consistent, ambitious. That's going to help with his development. Obviously, great pace, and he can use it as well with his dribbling ability. He's the kind of player who I feel like this guy could be really solid for us next year and I think it'd be wrong not to give him first team chances you know whilst as I said he might not be as good as Robin A when you just look at the polygon I think when you actually look at where their strengths lie Ducasse is going to be a better goal scoring finisher for us and with our current system using an advanced forward rather than a complete forward you know there's certain elements to Robin A's game that he has over Ducasse which just aren't as important of course the striker position has been a little bit of an area of concern this year um, we talked about the fact that Ajit Seema probably played his last game last episode we've already talked about Tuzgar leaving if these two players leave that is well almost well it's a lot of money it's over eight thousand pounds that we're going to be saving weekly on wages and they've really not played that much between them Lazmi or Lam as I think his name is actually pronounced but we've called him Lazmi now it's his name I'm sorry Brian you you've got it you can't get rid of it um he's a good player at 19 obviously we gave him some first team football but I feel like his development would be better served in the reserves next year particularly with the cast coming in the fact we only play a single striker system I feel like opportunities for him are going to be somewhat limited um Vasco Costa of course we signed at the start of the year I talked about him as a player I kind of regret signing I'd like to sell him on if possible it might be a case of that we have to loan him out because no one seems interested in the transfer dealing so I'll we'll have to see how things play out there but generally speaking, I mean, there's going to be a bit of a shake-up this year. It's not going to be a massive rebuild. Uh, I definitely want to continue to look at bringing in some more younger players. There are some younger players on my radar. There's one player who plays a Nancy in particular who, well, if we could get, would be fantastic. Um, we'll see if we, we can find him. He was a player playing in their first team this year as a centre-attacking mid. It's this guy, Ricardo Martin, I think. But yeah, 17 years old, this guy. He looks incredible. We'll give him a scout report, but his value's not that high. I, I feel like he'd be a good player to maybe go in on, depending on kind of how things look. You can see here, if we look at the season preview, he is considered here... Oh, actually, that's a different Martins. So that's all. But I was going to say, he's considered... I feel like he has been here. Maybe I'm wrong. But he has been here as kind of the key centre attack in mid at some points this season. So maybe that's something that he's going to look to keep hold of. Of course, when you look at this team... We don't have any players feature anywhere in the Media Dream 11, and perhaps that is indicative of the fact that we do need to look to continue to improve. But with that in mind, I kind of look at some of the key players in our first team, like Trincao, we talked about Ristol, I feel like Jean Do Fuchs we've talked about as well, an example of this, certainly Jean Ruiz. These are all players who next year are going to be fantastic players for this division, maybe even league and quality next season, you know, not that far into it, if they can develop correctly. And, well, fingers crossed, touch wood, these players are going to be good enough to carry us next year. You know, for a player like Jean Ruiz here, he has played 29 games this season. That is a lot of first-team football for a 20-year-old to be playing. And I'm really hoping he can thrive off that because that's going to be key to us. Anyway, you can see here, signing of the season was Panna, young player this season, Trincao. Our end of season review, we're expected, as you can see here, to get a top half finish. And, well, we finished in the playoffs, which we should be delighted about. But I feel like the nature of it all is what makes it a little bit of a, a bitter pill to swallow. Anyway, you can see here, in terms of squad dynamics, if we do sell Tardio, we might be leaving ourselves a little open to a leadership void at the top of the team, which is something that I am a little mindful of, you know, that if we were to sell Tardio, but... Maybe that's just part of the cause for this rebuild, you know, with Adrian Seema leaving, Berengua hopefully going to be able to sell him. It's going to open up opportunities for younger players to rise up here and hopefully play a bigger role in our team. Anyway, if we look here at the end of team meeting, we can tell the players what we plan to achieve for next year. Um, I want to aim for automatic promotion, and that has not gone well. Well... I still think we can get uh, automatic promotion. That is certainly going to be the aim as far as I'm concerned. You can see here, the board are very happy with the leadership of the team. Generally speaking, they've been happy with our performances as a whole. Transfers, they're actually quite happy with as well. On the injury front, we were very fortunate this year. We really didn't have that many injuries, which definitely benefited us. I do feel like an endeavour over the summer is going to be to try and add just a little bit more strength in depth if we can in a few different areas. Uh, it feels like this year we've called upon some of our reserves a little too frequently for my liking. You know, There's a few players here who, whilst they played league games for us, probably weren't good enough to play league games and shouldn't have been playing them. Players like Martin Francois here. 
perhaps a good example of that. Anyway, if we just look at our reserve team, because there are players here waiting in the wings who I'm contemplating giving you know a chance to next year. Of course, Chevalier, uh, our star youngster, one of the best players I've ever had in FM. Can't play until January next year on the 20th because of league rules, which is really annoying because he'd be a great addition to our team now. Nessa Carla is a player I'd like to give some opportunities to. You can see a player with good potential. He's only 18 years old. A consistent performer could improve a lot. He's the kind of player who may well find himself in the first team next year, depending on how brutal I am with kind of getting rid of older, um, you know, defenders particularly. Mar uh, Max uh, Lecroix here as well, another player I'd love to bring into the first team. I feel like when you actually compare this guy to Senhaji, you suddenly realise that actually maybe this guy should have been playing in the first team ahead of Senhaji when we were called in upon him. So Lecroix... If we can get rid of the, enough players, we'll make it into the first team. He's the kind of player who actually might be able to form a quite nice partnership with Jean Ruiz next season. Whilst they would be lacking a little bit of pace between them, they're two players of fairly similar moulds. Of course, Jean Ruiz a few years later on than Lacroix. But Lacroix just a player who has potential and we need to give regular first team football to in order to really truly develop. You can see it could improve a lot. Great in the air, considered a physical player. Has already improved a lot over the last three months. And if he can keep those improvements going over the summer and into the early stage of next year, he could be in good stead. And also Romain Sainz here. Uh, Sainz, uh, he's a good player, can play centre mid as well. I feel like I've always had a bit of a dilemma with this guy. I have been training him as a Mazala. I think I decided that during the academy episode. I was looking at him early though, earlier though, and I feel like as a fullback, that's probably where he's going to be a little bit better for us. And actually, we have got a bit of an issue at left back. For this coming season, because we have Pendant, of course, but Bergdish here, who we are looking to sell, is going to mean that we need a backup. And maybe Sands is the man to come in and be that backup. You can see comparing the two players, um, there's, obviously there is a difference between them, but Sands isn't that far off in reality. And so perhaps it's in my interest to give Sands a chance next year. I feel like for the reserve team, there's some good players here, of course. Um, hopefully some of them can continue to develop. There's lots of potential waiting in the wings. But, um, yeah, there might be one or two of them who make their way into the first team. Unfortunately, it feels like the best of our prospects are defenders. And that's actually one of the areas where we already have quite a lot of young talent. So we'll have to see how things play out on that front. But anyway, generally speaking across the team, I'm very happy with how things went. I feel like this opening season, it's been a bit of a learning experience. It's my first ever season in France. I feel like uh, I talked about you know the reasons why we struggled towards the end of the season. I think some of it was inexperience. I also think the tactical system itself... Could maybe do with a little bit of a rethink. Um, I wonder if we maybe should go control. Maybe we should, you know, go le a little less asymmetric. I've been playing around in my head with the idea of doing this. I feel like to start the season, we will probably stick with what we know. If it doesn't work, that's when we might look to change. Or even if it does work, you know, there's always room for improvement. And there's no reason not to experiment with systems. I feel like this year we kind of... I've almost focused too much on the coaching of young players and playing young players when really I should have been looking a little bit more at the system and where we could improve things going forward. But um, I think in terms of the core principle that I'm trying to develop here at Social, in terms of developing our own young players, bringing in young players and giving them a chance in re of re regular first-team football, we've been largely successful with that kind of, I guess, mission statement so far this year. And hopefully we can bring in some more younger players to match that kind of I guess attitude that we have and that's going to benefit us further and we can make that push next season that we didn't quite make this year to get into the Premier League oh sorry the Liga uh, I've slipped into English management mode there for a second but anyway that's kind of how that played out just a quick look at the league uh, table for people curious PSG won the league by five points over Monaco Montpellier Troyes uh, the two teams coming down Although, uh, worth noting that uh, Khan here, they actually managed to hold on to their position in the league, I believe. If I'm not mistaken, have they actually played yet? I'm, I'm presuming this here. They've not played yet, apparently. Well, when they do play, we'll see how they get on. I feel like they will probably win. They've got a really good squad. I was looking through their team because, of course, there was a possibility that we were going to have to play them um, in the playoffs. So I wanted to kind of know my enemy. And I'll be honest... I was a little scared coming up against these guys. They have some very good players who are significantly better than, well, the players in our division. And I feel, uh, well, for Lons, I mean, good luck, my friends. Hopefully you can do well. Of course, we only played them a day ago. I'm still a little salty about that loss. But, um, well, they're going to be looking to try and get promoted this year and all the power to them. 
But anyway, guys, that was just a little kind of end of season ramble, I guess. I'm sure with this, the stuff like include that's kind of of more use. If there is anything that you feel like I missed out, stuff that you'd like to hear me talk about uh, with regards to these end of season reviews, please do let me know. Uh, I feel like these videos could end up being a little too long. This one's running at about 20 minutes. I kind of just want to try and condense some of my thoughts, I guess, for the season and also kind of give you a little bit of an idea of where I see things going forward. Um, and I feel like that's kind of important. It's good for people who maybe miss an episode or two. If you're someone who likes to skip to the games, these kind of videos are great for just kind of giving you a bit of the nitty gritty and a bit of what's been going on in the back of my mind, I guess, with the end of the season and kind of a little bit of time to reflect on it all. But all in all, just a kind of TLDR Great season, happy with where we finished. I think it's actually fortunate in some ways that we didn't get promoted this year. Hopefully with the right young additions and, well, the continued development of those already here, we can get promoted via the, well, hopefully automatic spots, really, when you consider how close we got this season just gone. And, um, well, yeah, that's going to be all from me, I think, for today. Hopefully you did enjoy. Leave a like if you did. Of course, if you're new around here, subscribe. If you've got any comments, leave them down below. And other than that, it is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.